you are able for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. <coughs> so he told them this parable. Somewhere. <laughs> then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took over the place throughout the country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the, pig, that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around and kissed him. Then the said the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring me a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called to one of the slaves and asked, What's going on? And the slave replied, Your brother has come home, and your father has killed the fatted calf. Because he, has got, because he has found his way safe and sound. Then the brother became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But the son answered his father, Listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. And yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when his son of years come back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of the Lord. Praise you, God. God. Please be seated. <coughs> there was a man who had two sons. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, Pastor, we know. We know this parable of the prodigal son. One wanted to share of the family fortune now and spent it all and came home with his tail between his legs and with an apology. We know his daddy was happy and threw him a huge party and the son that stayed home was crazy mad. 
Dad gave, dad, dad forgave the son who spent all the money and all was right with the world. The end. Yes, Pastor, we know. So sermon's over for the day, right? Right? Who said right? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> it's probably you, Randy, wasn't it? Nope. <laughs> That's the happy parable we all have heard because that's the way perhaps previous pastors have preached it. But I'm going to turn the tables on it a little bit and I want you to look at the parable this way. What if the prodigal son wasn't sorry at all that he had squandered half of his family's money? Perhaps he was only sorry that he ran out of money and didn't want to eat with the pigs, and so he came home to tell Daddy, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Knowing that Daddy would take him back in and everything would be good again, and maybe he could get some more money from Daddy. Have you ever looked at it like that? <laughs> well, you're gonna today. <laughs> It's easy. Ooh, good thing I didn't need to read that anymore. It's easy for us to see both sides because I bet we've been on both sides. We call that sorry a, a sinner and saint. Sinner, I'm sorry, but I have every intention of doing it again at some point. And sorry as a saint. I am really sorry that I did that, and I intend never to do that again. That's when things get tricky. So how many of you have been going uh, south on 14, and you come to our one and only stoplight? <laughs> How many of you have ran that stoplight? <laughs> <laughs> and are you sorry? <laughs> Who hasn't run the stoplight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the biggest chicken in the world about, I'm not going to get caught. That's the time Deputy Dog's going to show up and say, one stoplight and you can't even stop for it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where we are today. That um, how are we sorry? How are we sorry? And this is rather warm. Sorry, Trudy. <sighs> are we really sorry when we say we're sorry? Are we really happy to be wherever it is we are, we, are, we are? Or are you just saying those things to make those around you feel better and maybe even yourself feel better? I don't know. Only you are going to be able to answer those kinds of questions. But here's the big point about how are we sorry? Are we saint sorry or sinner sorry? For us in our world, we hope we know the difference when somebody's saying it to us. Because I'm sure as you are raising your children and perhaps one of them punched the other one or something and they said, Mommy! Randy hit me! <laughs> Randy, apologize to your sister. <coughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay, which sorry is that? Sorry that you went and told mom, you big baby. That's probably the sorry it is, right? You know what? You know who doesn't care about if we're sorry saint or sorry sinner? Oh, I bet the camera didn't pick that up. So you need to say it again. God. God. That's right. God is abundant in his forgiveness. And God doesn't care that you're sorry or that you're sorry. 
God just wants to forgive you. Long before you've done that sin even, God wants to, has, and does forgive us. Just as the father could have cared less what his son was saying, it was the fact that there was his son and he was home. Thanks be to God, let me throw a party. Last night, Andrew went to prom. Friday, Andrew got his driver's license. Saturday was the first time this child has driven by himself. And it was also the first time he drove in the dark. Mama was up till 4 o'clock this morning. <laughs> waiting for those headlights to come on. Yes. I was never so happy to see a car pull into our street at four in the morning as I was when it was our son. I could have run out of the garage and hugged him, but it was like burr cold, and so I waited. And yes, that's a very tiny example of someone coming home, but it felt like the world when he came home. And Ron said yesterday or today that the word for our Latin words is lifted. And he said, that burden, that worry has been lifted for our, from our shoulders. Our son is home and asleep. <laughs> where frankly I wish I was <laughs> there I admit it I'm tired what what you say Mr. Jim <laughs> oh I wish I could have heard that one I bet it was good Dr. David Luce who um sees this parable kind of in the same way I do, says, and he puts it so much more better, so much more better, because that's good English, puts it so much better than I, this way. God who has so much forgiveness to grant that God dishes it out with abandon, so much grace to offer that God pours it upon us, whether we deserve it or not, so much love to share that God simply can't hold back that and lavishes it upon us recklessly. That is just so hard to believe. So hard to believe that someone can love us so much, no matter what we've done, that he just pours it on us. And I hope that you feel that love, you feel that grace, you feel that forgiveness, that you feel those arms wrapped around you. We truly don't deserve the reception that the prodigal son received. We certainly haven't earned that fatted calf and that party of music and dancing. But God knows that. And so instead of offering to us a fatted calf and a party of music and dancing, he offered his son to us who went to the cross for us and lavishes, lavishes us with a meal of bread and wine, of body and blood. So that whether we say sorry or sorry, we're forgiven. Not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. And not because of what we've said or how we've said it or how we've meant it, but because God loves us and God cares for us and only wants the best for us, the fatted calf for us to eat upon and feast upon. And as we are in our Lenten journey and we walk 
closer and closer to the cross with Christ. I hope in your reflections of the words that you're, that you're looking at every day during Lent, that you can begin to feel that from our Lord. You can begin to feel what it is to get closer and closer to that cross with our Lord, Jesus Christ. The ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate fatted calf on our behalf. So when you shoot past, so when you shoot past the stop sign, say you're sorry, knowing you're forgiven, but just be really careful.